Hey there YouTube, Wrestling Optimus here, back with another unboxing video. And today we are going to be taking a look at some AEW tag teams. But first, a little housekeeping. I am using a different camera today that is hopefully a little bit better, but the trade-off is the audio might be a little worse. But let's just jump into the unboxing and we'll see what happens. First up is actually just the final addition to a trio, which I already have a tag team for. That's the House of Black. As you can see here, I already have Malachi Black and Buddy Matthews, but today we are adding Brody King. So with the exception of Julia Hart, that should complete the group. Now let's set these two aside and take a look at Brody. He is part of the Unmatched Collection, specifically he is number 61 of Series 8. It looks like we're going to be getting an extra set of hands, as well as an extra head sculpt that comes with a really cool mask. It has a skull here, a bandana underneath, and then some cool antlers. And then of course we're going to be taking a look at this jacket as well as all these awesome tattoos. We have this picture of Brody right there. And if we spin this around, we have another one back here with that fake signature. And that picture is from AEW Revolution on March 6, 2002 from Orlando. And it looks like they did complete the House of Black in this line with Malachi Black there and Buddy Matthews right there. But apparently Series 8 also includes Penta Oscuro, his alternate persona, as well as an old school ROH style CM Punk. We'll continue spinning this around, and I think it's time to let Brody King breathe. So right out of the box, he stands up really well, all the joints move really well, and I guess we'll start with the extra hands. They are fist hands with this kind of black tape all over them, while the ones that come on the figure itself are just open hands. Now it turns out I was actually wrong, there is no second head sculpt underneath here, it's all one giant piece, so you would just replace the head there with this piece. But again, it is super cool, let's take a look at this. And this is part of why I wanted to use this new camera, you can definitely see the detail a lot better than with my old setup. We have this bandana that kind of wraps around his head here, and then we have that kind of skull mask on the front with the big ol' antlers. This looks really badass. Maybe we'll pop it on after we take a look at the rest of the figure. Speaking of which, bring him up here. We got a pretty awesome head sculpt there. It looks just like him. Maybe not exactly, but he has a pretty indiscriminate face to begin with. Taking a look right here, oh my goodness, the tattoo work is absolutely incredible. Take a look at that right there. I think that's some type of like Chinese dragon or something. I'm not gonna pretend to know what his tattoos are, but the paint here on the figure is amazing. And this is probably gonna be one of the hardest ones to do just because of how many tattoos Birdie King actually has. But look, all over the legs here, up and down both arms that are practically sleeves. While we're doing this, look at this jacket with the awesome spine and rib cage pattern here. On this side, we got more tattoos. We'll spin that arm around so you can see absolutely everything. Again, the joints are really, really nice right out of the packaging. I'm liking this entrance jacket or whatever the heck it is. But let's take that off. And now let's just compare the height against his fellow compatriots. What's funny is Buddy Matthews is actually the second tallest, um, but both of these are Mattel figures as opposed to the AEW Jazzwares figures. And even more critically, this is a basic figure while this is an elite figure. So couldn't be any more different, but here they are, the House of Black. And now, let's give Brody his other head and see what that looks like. And there we go, definitely gotta give it to Jazzwares. The heads pop on and off really easily, but still aren't really loose or anything like that. I doubt it's being picked up by the camera, but you can actually see the eyeballs within the mask there. It looks sunken back and really cool. That's probably why I thought there was another head sculpt under there. 
but either way, this is awesome. I really don't know what else you could have wanted with a Brody King action figure other than maybe a few more accessories, but this extra entrance head sculpt makes up for all of that. Again, you do get this extra piece of clothing, which is really badass in its own right. So I'm going to give Brody King a 10 out of 10. I can't think of anything bad about it. Moving on, we are going to be opening up figures two at a time now. Like I said, this is a tag team episode. And our first team is the Acclaimed. Top of the chain, so I bet you know the name. Keeping all the fans entertained, the Acclaimed. That's right, we got the best wrestler alive, Platinum Max Caster, and the five-tool player, Anthony Bowens. I'm finally gonna get a chance to team them up with Daddy Ass. I can't wait to open these up and add them to the collection, but first and foremost, we have got to talk about these head sculpts. Even in the box, you can tell that Max Caster is pretty janky. And although it's less so, Anthony Bowens isn't much better. But the accessories, the clothes, and the serious face sculpts look like they might be able to save this tag team. I've been waiting forever for these guys to come out, so let's just take a look at them in the box before we begin. They are both part of the Unrivaled Collection Series 14, but they are strangely not in numerical order. Anthony Bowens is number 127, while Max Caster is number 129. You can see here, fittingly, they both have microphones, and they are both holding up their scissors. It appears they each have additional clothing, a vest for Anthony Bowens, and a basketball jersey of sorts for Max Caster. But Max also has a chain, a baseball cap, and a set of headphones. I will say, I wonder what happened to the boombox that Anthony Bowens used to bring to the ring. That would have been a great accessory for him. Either way, spinning them around here. We have some great shots of them. And it does look like the AEW figure for Billy Gunn is also part of this series, along with Keith Lee, Swerve Strickland, Ricky Starks with the FTW belt, and Tony Storm with the AEW Women's World Championship belt. Both pictures on the back of the boxes here are from All Out 2022 in Chicago, Illinois. And of course, Bowen's signature says, Scissor Me. By the way, does anybody else remember that Keith Lee's still on the roster and these two used to be tag team champions together? Because you could have fooled me. Anyway, we'll spin these back around, and now it's time to let the acclaimed breathe. Yo. Yo. Listen. I'm about to tell you about these acclaimed action figures here, and we're just gonna start, rip the band-aid off, and talk about these head sculpts. Now. Once I took them out of the box, I must admit, the Max Caster head sculpt is not as bad as I thought it was. However, it's still pretty bad. But with that said, his secondary head sculpt is pretty good, and I'll probably just put that on for future use in videos. Similarly, Anthony Bowen's head sculpt with the tongue out does look a lot better than I initially thought it would. And on top of that, his serious head sculpt looks remarkably like him. So I'm definitely going to use that one moving forward in videos. As for the extra hands, it's weird because Anthony Bowens comes with both a left and right scissor hand as well as a left and right mic holding hand. That makes sense. But Max Caster only comes with one scissor hand and then an extra mic holding hand. So that's kind of weird. But either way, the other two accessories are Max Caster's acclaimed hat here, as well as his headphones. It looks like you can put the headphones on by themselves, but there's a lot of space there, so I'm guessing that is supposed to have the hat with it. And sure enough, there you go. Um, that looks kind of weird, I'm not gonna lie, so I probably won't be putting that on unless I am staging him for an entrance. But yeah, let's take a look at these two together. They have all sorts of acclaimed and scissor logos all over their clothing here. We got a microphone. We got Best Wrestler Alive. We got acclaimed A, more acclaimed down here on the boots. 
There are scissors and yo all over his pants. We got platinum 78 on the back. I believe his father played in the NFL and that might have been his number. We got everyone loves the acclaimed on the back of Bowen's vest here. I didn't point it out before, but we do have this really cool silver chain over here on Platinum Max. Uh, we got pink trunks for him with a big ol' scissor on the crotch. White boots over here that kind of look like uh, a piano. While Max Caster has silver boots on the left there. So here is where we come to the final grades, and this is a little bit difficult because I have wanted acclaimed action figures forever. And that means the figures were gonna have to live up to some pretty lofty expectations. On the other hand, there's so much to work with when it comes to these guys that you should have put out some incredible action figures. And sure enough, most of that stuff is here. They both need a mic, they needed scissor hands, Max Caster needed a chain, he needed a hat, he needed some headphones, but I'm still gonna contend that Anthony Bowens needed a boombox. Most importantly though, the head sculpts. I'm gonna deduct one point from each one of them for the head sculpts being a little bit off, although again, to be fair, they were better once out of the box than I initially anticipated just from looking at them from outside the box. And I think I'm gonna settle on a 9 out of 10 for both of them. They are really great figures, but yeah, let's try and get that true FX technology over from WWE. Next up, we got a team that has made waves since AEW's very first show, but for some reason have never won the titles and are never in any big storylines, and that is Private Party. That's right, it's Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Quinn. Really talented guys, they had some early success, but then they got stuck in the Matt Hardy vortex for a while. Mark Quinn got injured for a while, and then when he came back, Isaiah Cassidy was on a bit of a singles push now. And yeah, I don't know, I'm just really hoping that things are gonna pick up for these two in the really near future. With that said, we got some really great looking figures here. They are wearing matching Life of the Party private party shirts that seem to have a yellow smiley face and a purple skull-ish design here. And it is, of course, on fire. Uh, we got some extra hands, but otherwise not much in the way of accessories. Oh wait, I guess they do have uh, sunglasses and gold chains. And if we spin these around, by the way, they are both part of Series 12. They are numbers 107 and 108. And this includes another John Moxley, FTR's Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler, as well as the debut of Jamie Hayter. And their pictures are from random episodes of Rampage and Dynamite, respectively. Spinning those around. Not sure what else we can tell just by looking at the boxes, so I think it's time to let them breathe. Okay, first up, extra hands. Both of the figures come with fists out of the box, and they have extra sets of loose mic holding hands. And again, might as well take a look at both of them together. It looks like Mark Quinn's rocking some white pants, while Isaiah Cassidy is rocking some black pants. Both of them have gold chains and sunglasses, but of course Mark Quinn here, who I have flexing away, that's how he kind of was in the packaging. Uh, he's got this awesome hair that goes down the back, it's kind of a double mohawk. And that is of course juxtaposed with the just kind of plain hair of Isaiah Cassidy. I'm not hating or anything, just saying. Mark Quinn's is much cooler. However, Mark Quinn doesn't have much in the way of tattoos, while Isaiah Cassidy here has some real nice looking stuff. Seems to be some type of crown on something, I'm not really sure. On this side we have what looks like the Statue of Liberty. And honestly, these shirts are really cool, and they kind of identify them, especially uh, Isaiah, since Mark Quinn does have that distinctive hair. So I'm going to leave those shirts on for videos. Moving down to these pants again, they have um, obviously the alternate striping. So we got the black on white and the white on black. Comes down to what looks like maybe bell bottoms and then just some basic black shoes. 
With a lot of these tag teams, I really do wish they had released them together in a two-pack, maybe even giving you a little bit of a discount for buying two at the same time. But then again, AEW's marketing and merchandise departments haven't been great pretty much since day one of the company. Either way, that has nothing to do with this tag team or these action figures. These are pretty solid for what they are. However, you don't really get a lot of extras. The extras you do get would be the shirts, the chains, and the sunglasses, and you know what? That is fair enough, so I'm going to give these a 9 out of 10. They look accurate, they're really cool, I like the tattoo work, and there's just enough accessories to make them get a really good grade. So yeah, despite having better head sculpts, these are actually just as good as the acclaimed. Last but not least, we have a tag team that's had some injury troubles preventing them from getting any type of real push. It's The Butcher and The Blade. And yes, before I go any further, I am still looking into possibly getting the bunny, but I'm not sure if she's been on TV in forever, so I'm gonna hold off for now. And yes, for those of you who don't know, the bunny is the Blade's real-life wife. These two are part of series 13, they are numbers 119 and 120 respectively. Another interesting fact, the Butcher is actually a professional guitarist. I'm spacing on his band, but they're kind of like a hardcore band. Anyway, the figures look like they are both gonna come with some really cool jackets. And then because the Butcher wears this bandana and hat to the ring, we're gonna get a plain head sculpt as well. We'll take a look at the clothes more once we actually get them open, but let's spin them around in the meantime. <laughs> we have Butch and the Blade. Again, this is part of Series 13, which also has Sting, another Darby Allen, another Wardlow. There she is, the Bunny, as well as Danhausen. There's a couple of him out there. I'm kind of looking at each one and seeing which is the best before I finally get my Danhausen. And yes, like Simon Miller likes to say, goofy wrestling for life. I love Dan Housen. He's awesome. But neither one of these guys are Dan Housen. They are the Butcher and the Blade. And just so we can get a better look at all that tattoo work, I think it's time to let these guys breathe. To start off, it looks like the Butcher has open hands, so they gave him an extra set of fist hands. And we'll move over to the blade because, yes, he does have a removable hat and ill-fitting sunglasses that don't really stay on. So you can take those off, but the head sculpt that comes with the figure in the box here has this bandana and that cannot be taken off. And so if we switch it out for the other head sculpt, we get this completely nondescript white guy with a beard. Not really sure what else to tell you. He's got solid black pants, solid black boots, and just the most basic head I've ever seen in all of action figuredom. I guess what you're really paying for is this jacket, but even the jacket itself is straight up black. There's nothing on here. It doesn't even say like the blade on the back or just, I don't know, have a picture of a knife, something. I guess it's cool that there's a hat here. Great, now he looks like a dock worker or something. I I'm not sure. Honestly, this almost looks more like Finn Balor than the Blade. Either way, not gonna lie, bit of a disappointment. Very, very basic. The Butcher, on the other hand, wow. That is a distinctive figure. We even got his, like, really awkward, uneven bald spot up there. But we got the long hair, we got the full beard and mustache. We got a jacket here with actual, like, details. We got some zippers and some buttons and stuff. I mean, not a lot, but it's better. And then if we take it off, we'll be able to take a look at all these tattoos. Now, I will point out that his sunglasses do stay on a lot better, but the head really wobbles around a whole heck of a lot. I'm not sure if that's just my figure or what, but yeah, once you get that jacket off and there's nothing to kind of support it by the hair, um, it just kind of flops around. So that's a little disappointing. Um, also, his just kind of body shape seems off. I feel like he's a much bigger, beefier guy and this kind of, especially with the sunglasses off and whatnot, it really doesn't look like him. Unfortunately, in the time it took them to make this figure, he also cut his hair, so he already looks different than he does on TV. 
But with those issues out of the way, let's pull them a little bit closer to the camera here so we can take a look at these awesome tattoos. Looks like we have symmetrical skulls, as well as maybe a moth or butterfly in between. We have some type of flame design right here. And I think it says Hellraiser. Over here we have a little bit of color pop as the face on that design is in blue. Down here, even more color pop. Not really sure what the picture is, but it seems to be maybe two type of people embracing. We have uh, a green tattoo up here. We have more on his bicep. We have the one across his back. I think that says the death or something along those lines. His tights here say butcher. We got some black and white boots. But continuing our tour of tattoos, we got this potentially sacrilegious one here that says, talk is cheap. And then we got some cool pink flowers all along this arm. So yeah, once again, awesome tattoo work. Gotta give it to him for this and for Brody King. But other than that, um, I'm really, really kind of disappointed in a lot of things about these. Um, this is one of the most basic AEW figures, or just frankly action figures I've ever gotten in my life. So we're going to give it the most basic grade ever and give it a 5 out of 10. I do really love all the tattoos on the Butcher over here. I like his jacket and his sunglasses, um, but unfortunately that head sculpt is a little off. It's way too wobbly and his body shape is off. So I'm going to give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Definitely the most disappointing of the lot today, but that is okay, because they're not on TV that much and definitely not on pay-per-views that often. Alright, and that's going to do it for my AEW Tag Team Unboxing Special. Let me know what you thought of all these figures down there in the comments. And if you liked the video, make sure to do all that normal YouTube stuff. Smash the like button, share with any wrestling or action figure fans you may know, subscribe to the channel, and spread the word. You can also talk to me over on X at Wrestling Optimus, or see all my best figure photography over on Instagram at Wrestling Optimus. I'm also on Facebook now. If you haven't seen my latest video, it should be on screen now. But until next time, I've been Wrestling Optimus, and I'll catch you later.